In this video, I'm going to take the entire medical school application process and boil it down into three core principles that if you can truly understand these, internalize them and implement them, it will make your application the strongest it can possibly be. One of the main concerns of potential medical students when they're applying is that of grades. Now, of course, it demands high grades, but that is not the only thing. If you're doing A-levels, you probably need to be looking at minimum AAB for some universities, whereas on the higher end, it might even be as high as A star, A star, A. If you're sitting the IB, you're kind of looking at a 36, 35 to get in. Then if you come from another grading system internationally, it's worth contacting the universities because they will have their own policy about that specific country and the grades they require. Basically, the main takeaway is that whatever we do here to help you get into medical school and all the advice that I give on my channel, if you don't get the grades, then it all counts for nothing. So your primary focus really should be making sure that you get the required grades. Because if you do and you don't get a place at medical school, well, at least you live to fight another day with that and you can use those grades to apply at the next cycle. If you don't, you may have to resit those exams again and universities have specific policies for that, some of which you might be excluded from, or you might have to go through a different degree and then go via the graduate route, which is way more competitive, 34 applicants to one place. If you want to learn a little bit more about graduate applications and how I can change those odds and make them in your favor, you might want to check out this video here. Otherwise, the best way is to kind of make sure that you kind of have everything sorted so you are taking care of each thing as it comes along. I compartmentalize the university application into four phases. I actually describe those four phases in this video here which I'd recommend you watch to kind of help you prepare and plan your year ahead when you're applying to medical school. It's certainly not a prerequisite but it does help if you do know which medical schools you're thinking of applying to prior to picking your A-levels. That's because you can go on their website and they will tell you specifically what A-levels they require to be eligible to apply to that university. And especially if you have a complicated academic past or you're applying from a abroad, it can help just to call them directly and have a chat with them about your situation and confirm what you need or whether you are currently eligible. And they're usually very friendly and very helpful with all that stuff. However, it's important to realize that universities look at more than just grades when picking prospective medical students, because otherwise they would just literally pick the highest scorers. Being a doctor requires academic as well as several other important skills. So I'll outline now some of the academic and non-academic skills that they look for when picking students. Academically, they want to see good school grades as we talked about earlier with the A-levels, IB. Also with GCSE, they want to see at least a six in maths and English, just to make sure that you've got a minimum amount of competency. When you apply to GEM, they might still want those, but sometimes if you've got a 2-1 degree, they're happy to kind of take that. If you want to learn more, I've got a dedicated playlist just for GEM applicants here. After that, they want to see good scores in the aptitude test. So the UCAT, the BMAT, or the GAMSAT can be a critical part of you being invited to interview. I won't talk about this much here because on this channel, I do a load of teaching on all of those tests, one of which you might want to check out here, which is my UCAT playlist. After that, pursuits like an EPQ might help, especially if you're applying to the more academic heavy universities, such as Oxbridge or maybe some of the London universities. And finally, if you're applying from a non-English speaking country, they will want you to sit one of the IELTS, which is a competency test of English, and they want to see a score of 7.5 or above to be eligible to apply to UK medical school. That score of 7.5, they want to see achieved by the time you start the course. So if you're applying in September 22, for example, you don't start until September 2023. So that will be the requirement that you have that completed by that September 2023 start. On the non-academic side, they want to see a few things. The first is that you have work experience, so exposure to the profession. Now there's a lot to untangle when it comes to work experience. So I discuss that in detail in this video here. After that, they have a minimum age requirement. So you have to be 18 at the time of starting medical school usually. Then they want to see a minimum amount of occupational health clearance, which means that you have certain vaccines and that you can prove that you've had those. And then finally, they want to check your criminal record and make sure that you pass the police checks, which is done by the disclosure and barring service system. Ultimately, the process is generic, which means that it's systematized to try and be as fair as possible. But that means that it basically turns into a game. And that's the key thing that I teach my students on my program is that you have to just try and learn to play the game 
game, play it as well as you can, tick all the boxes and jump through all those hoops, and that will land you in the best position to be offered a place. If you want some one-on-one -on -one teaching, you can check out the program here where I kind of tell you exactly how we can help you and how we've had such an amazing success rate with getting students in. But as I say, they try and make it as fair as possible. UCAS applications are reviewed by multiple people, interview panels are under strict guidance as to what they can and can't give marks for. But ultimately, the entire medical school application, when you break it down, boils down to them checking that you have three things. The first is the academic abilities that we talked about earlier. The second is communication skills, that you can communicate or that you have the traits required to be a doctor, or at least the seedlings that can develop into the potential of having those skills that make a good doctor. And then finally, they want to see that you have the passion for the job. They want to see that you understand the career, you know what it's about, and you still want to go with it, and you're very dedicated to a career that's going to basically last you an entire lifetime. So one thing that it helps to understand that you may get asked about directly when you're interviewed is what actually makes a good doctor. Now, the best explanation that I've come across, and one that I particularly agree with, is that of Dr. Peter Atias. He's a guy who does functional medicine and has an amazing podcast called The Drive, which I highly recommend that you listen to. And he says that a good doctor boils down to the four A's. The first one he talks about is ability. And this is by far the most important, which I definitely agree with. You need to have the knowledge and the ability and the skills to be able to help your patient. And that comes first and foremost before anything else. The second is affability. Now that's not just about getting patients to like you, but it's actually getting them on board with your treatment. If you can't get the patient to trust you, then they won't carry out the treatment that you recommend, and that's as good as useless, which means that you won't be able to affect them and therefore won't be an effective doctor. The third one he mentions is advocacy. That's basically how well you know the system and can work it to get a patient in a given scenario to where they need to be in the most efficient and direct manner possible. And the final one he talks about is accessibility, which is more for the American healthcare system where you kind of do have doctor's numbers directly if you're a patient sometimes, or access to their secretary who's very got very direct access to you. This is less so in the NHS, but still in the UK, you can still use that analogy of accessibility by how responsive are you to when you get called, to emails, to kind of just making things happen. Some people are a lot more proactive than others, and I kind of put that ability to get things done under accessibility. However, that is just one way of answering that question. It's perfectly fine to have your own opinion about that. Just be ready to have an intelligent discussion about it and have some reasons for backing why you say the things that you do. So that boils down the essence of really what you need to do to build a strong medical school application. But the most important trait I would say is that of kind of getting stuff done, that proactiveness. That's gonna extend into your A-levels or whatever exams you're taking. You really need to do whatever you can to make sure that you get those grades. So whether that means getting a tutor or just doing extra work just to make sure you go that extra mile. There's absolutely nothing wrong with getting help. And I find that getting a tutor or someone to guide you is really what makes the difference. That's definitely what I've found with our academy program where we help students directly one-on-one. -on -one. And we can see that there are little errors that they're making or blind spots that they've got or just things that they didn't know that make the whole process so much easier. And just by us helping them one-on-one, -on -one, we take that kind of what it is where the sometimes it's 8% success rate, 25% in some years, and depending on the university. And we've turned that into a 90% success rate for all of our students who've come on the academy. So if you wanna check out how you can get one-on-one -on -one help, you might wanna check out this video here, which is gonna tell you in depth kind of how we help our students achieve the level of success that we do. So thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you over in one of those.